Today we're going to be talking about pattern. I'm going to be reading some information that I've written down here. Um, and then after that we're going to be moving over here and looking at examples of not only what I have created but what artists have created throughout history and how they've used pattern in different ways. So, looking at pattern, let me just talk about it a little bit. The importance of pattern cannot be emphasized enough. Now, the value of the shapes and the sizes of those different shapes in your work are essential. The light and dark shapes can set you up for success. Now, if you don't get the basic shapes of your work right, it's pretty much pointless to continue on and get all the fine details and textures and everything like that just right. Because if the basic composition and the basic layout of what you're creating isn't right, then those details are just going to make for a mediocre painting. If you can get it so that when you're across the room and you look at the painting from afar, it's interesting, and then as you get closer and those details and textures come up, the painting's only that much more interesting, you have this great work of art, and you are successful, and you have found one of the keys to being a successful painter. Um, avoid using geometric shapes in your work, so avoid using perfect circles. Avoid using um, squares because the eye actually just passes over that because it understands it so well. The more irregular of shapes you can use in your work, the more intrigue there is to the eye and the more the eye is going to want to look at that painting. So what some of the books actually said were the where you want the eye to look and where you want the focal point of your work, so the point where you want the most attention in your work to land is if you have the most irregular shapes in that area, the eye's naturally going to land there. Um, so, kind of how, how do you make these paintings, you might think. Now, what I would suggest is maybe even coming up with some different compositional sketches of things that you might want to, you know, try out. And then when you have your subject matter to put in there, then you already have these ideas of cool compositions that you would want to put that subject matter in. Start with an underpainting. So start by just painting in the basic dark shapes of your work and keeping it from the light to dark shapes. Those middle tones will naturally fill themselves in. So start with those dark and light shapes and see how it looks from across the room. Take a step back. Once you've taken that step back, if it's interesting, then come back and keep adding in some more details and building up those different colors and contrasts and the compositional elements. Um, underneath all good represent, representational paintings, so underneath any painting that looks very realistic, is some sort of a great abstract painting. The idea of the composition is totally abstract. And if we look at some of the famous works of history here, um, if you look behind Mona Lisa here, let's say her, um, it's just pretty much an abstract background that we understand as a landscape, but truthfully it's very abstracted. If we look at, um, let's go down to, this is a famous Japanese print here, and if you look at it, it's very abstract actually, and we understand it as a wave, but it's really just the motion and the sky bringing you back down and that movement in the work. Here's another one that has a great um, pattern to it. If you see here, the pattern of the pillars and the compositional elements here are just wonderful. I really think this is a great example of what I mean by pattern because there's eyes, there's arms pointing up here to bring you here, he's bringing you down, her legs are bringing you here, her eyes and her arms are bringing you back down to these details down here. Then it goes back to, you know, this guy who brings you back up. And there's all these intrigue in this work because of pattern. Now, here's a couple works I, uh, I've used, just a little bit of pattern lately. And this is more geometric than what I'm talking about, 
But in these words, that pattern in the background or in the foreground here, or the pattern in the sky here, just brings that little bit more of intrigue to my work to draw attention to that actual focal point of what I want people to look at. Um, there's some different um, conversations to be had about what styles of patterns are most successful, but what I would say is if you can step away, if you step away from your work and you look at it from afar and it's not interesting, change something about it. Zoom in more. Take a step back. Don't just accept a photograph as the ultimate truth in your paintings because a photograph is the absolute perfect representation of whatever it was that happened. A painting can be an idealized form of that because the painting has this amazing ability to take this awesome tree from here and bring it next to it and put it in this sweet cityscape background or a painting can totally blur out everything except the one thing that you really want and the pattern of the darkness in that background of that repeated shape of you know a pole or some sort of a pillar can then draw the viewer's eye to that awesome focal point. I hope you've enjoyed this talk about pattern. I look forward to talking with you more about passage which is actually going to be our next topic. Thanks for sitting down talking with me. Hope you're enjoying this little conversation that we've had. I, uh, I look forward to seeing pattern in your work and really those different ideas that we just covered. Hope you have a great day, have a great week, and keep painting. The best thing you can ever do is just to practice, practice, and continue to practice.